everybody, welcome to another episode of Linux Guy. Today I'm going to talk about app images and sort of what they are, what they are not, and how to use them. So, I've got an app image right here. It is basically a file. I've heard them compared to ISO files before. They're kind of like that. They're kind of like a snapshot of a program with everything that program needs, all its dependencies and everything in here. There's pros and cons to this. The pro you don't have to worry so much about compatibility like with a specific distribution. App images should work on just about any Linux distribution you have them on, so long as it's a new enough one to support app image. Now one of the downsides is this can make your applications way, way, way bigger. So if you have a specific dependency that almost all of the programs on your computer use, they could share it if they were installed with a traditional .deb or .rpm or whatever binary system your Linux distribution uses. And it's just more efficient that way. Where the app image, it's all self-contained, each one of them would have its own instance of that file. One of the real nice things about app images, though, is that you can write your code for Linux and it will work on all Linux distributions, not just Ubuntu, not just Arch Linux, not just OpenSUSE. It'll run on all of them. And this is real convenient and useful, and I think a lot of people are taking notice of it. A lot of people will also bring up flat packs and snaps. Snaps I like on servers, and that's about their only use case where I like them, because they're not fully open source. Flatpaks are great, and Pop! OS has Flatpak integration, and I use Flatpaks wherever possible. App images are kind of the third one for me, and they're this weird middle ground, and I do use some app images, mostly for programs that I either need a really rock-solid stable version of, and I don't want updates running on it all the time, or something that I really can't find anywhere else, and there are a few instances of that. MeshLab is an instance of that. So MeshLab is a program for 3D image manipulation. I want to use this program on this computer. So what do I do? Well, I've downloaded my app image. You see it's got a lock thing on it. This is because we're going to have to change some permissions. Yours may not have this, but you'll probably still have to change some permissions. Let's do that first. So here's our MeshLab app image, just like it is in the file browser. And if we look at its permissions, you'll see that it's owned by me, it's in my group, and it's read-only on everything. Well, this is the part that we're the most interested in. We need to be able to execute this. So, by execute, I mean in the file browser. I should be able to double-click it, and it should launch the program. So let's change that. How do we do that? So we'll want to do chmod for this, and we want 7 for ourselves, which gives us full permissions, and let's do 66 for the other locations, and mesh lab. Now if we look again, you'll see my user has read write execute and I've given the group and other users read write access to it. You may not want this last one, you may not want either of these, but this is just what I'm choosing to do. You'll see that lock is gone now and if I double click this, here is MeshLab, it opened right up. So this is great. Now I can just double click this and I have my program and that's real nice and neat. I don't really want it in my downloads folder. Let's close out of here. We don't need our terminal anymore, but let's go ahead and put a folder called Programs in my home folder. And this is how I like to handle app images. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is what I like to do. So I cut and paste it and put it in there. Now this is just a place where all of them can live. And again, I can open it. It's got the same permissions. However, if I search MeshLab, here, you'll see I do actually have an instance of it, that's because I have it installed on another user profile. But how did I do that? Well, there's a way. So there's a program called a la carte, and I'm going to explain this program in more detail in another video. But basically, what I've done here is I've made this available here by going to whatever I want to use, this is graphics, and I go to MeshLab properties, and I can type a command that will execute this application. So for this, if I want to execute MeshLab, the command I would want to put there would be home the Linux guy programs MeshLab. Since it's executable, this will launch the program. Now if I copy and paste this directly into a la carte right there, then I will get a launcher that I can use in GNOME. I believe a la carte works with KDE also. If I'm wrong, somebody let me know. I'm pretty sure it also works with XFCE 
I don't know if it works on LXDE, but I seem to recall using a la carte for all of these to create a launchable icon that I can click to load my program. So that's a quick look at app images. They're really nice, especially if you're looking around for a program and you can't find a binary file like a deb file or an RPM file to install the program on your computer or it's not in your repos. Pop OS is nice because it's got Flatpak support in 20.04 so I can get Flatpaks right from the pop shop. But they're not all inclusive. They don't include everything. App images are a nice supplement to what I already have. And maybe you're really all about solid programs that you update when you're darn well ready to update them. Maybe app images are something you want to use for that. As always, thank you for watching The Linux Guy. Make sure to follow us on Library. Send us a tip if you feel so inclined, and we'll see you in the next one.